So today we're gonna we're gonna start to uh, to chapter two point four, like a resampling method. So resampling method actually about how we can access to our main question for the this one is how we can access to the generalization performance of the model. So that means to it's a, it's it's actually like a kind of a process for the validating validating our model performances because uh, when we try to do the model for the predictive purposes or classification uh, prediction kind of a problem the, the, the thing is that uh, we have to try to after training training our model we have to try to testing the how valid and how trust how trustworthy we uh, it it is for by by doing uh after the training the model so that means we have a uh, actually uh, using the to use the valid data approaches we actually do the splitting our training data set again to to create the two parts like one is uh, just kind of a training set and the other one is the validation set which is the holdout set so actually using the single holdout set that means just only using the one one resampling process method to to testing the uh, performance of our model is uh, not unreliable to measuring our model performances. So that means in our so now in our training training data set, we actually do do the separate the two parts like a, one is a trend training and then the other one is a valid, validation training sets and then uh, try to do this try to repeat in the this the sampling process and then uh, we have keep applying to the these kind of a variation of the sampling things into our model to uh, to testing the performances. So that's the two way we can do. Uh, okay, so first of all is uh, just kind of a K, what is called the K-fold cross validation. What do you mean by K means kind of like a number of, uh, uh, number of groups, right? So that means here, like a K group means that this is group. So maybe when we have a three, three fold, that means our training set gonna be split into the three parts. And then one gonna be the holdout set. Maybe four means we actually divided our training data set into the four parts. And then one of them gonna be the holdout set, like a test data set. So dividing data set, is almost equal size. That means maybe, for example, when we have a 100, uh, 100 sample size, and then our our group gonna be the four. That means our each each uh, fold gonna be the 25. So that's the how we can sampling is about. And then every observation between part of the holdout data set across the old group, which means as you can see at the bottom, this figure. So we actually try to do the, okay, when we assuming that we can divide our training data set into the five groups, in that case, this one is a fold one, two, three, four, five. And then every, every group have at least one but at least, uh, not at least one of one chances to play a role, uh, serve as a test data set. I mean, so in in the first two sampling, uh, 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 the sampling variation means maybe for the one gonna be the test, and then the second one gonna be the second, uh, for the two gonna be the test one, etc., like this. So that means. All of the all of the group sample group can serve as uh, part of the holdout data set to set across the all groups. 
that's the case for the um, validation and then uh, it is quite quite very straightforward and simple so that's the how this one is about and then the other way we can do is what is called the boot bootstrapping so that means when we when we looking at the, this one at the top this one is actually kind of a, each sample each sample is a kind of exclusive to one another that means there is a no overlaps or no replacement between the data sets, right? But in case of the bootstrapping, we actually drawing the sample data set with the with the with the replacement, which means like a, for example in here, when we have a three blue and two orange, three brown, and four uh, four red. In that case, when we try to when we try to think about the okay. Sample size gonna be gonna be twelve. Each each bootstrapping sample should be the should be the sample size have the twelve. That means we only have a we only have a how many is a five, eight, and twelve. But the thing is, by a lot of variation with the replacement, we can try to try to divide the same or uh, deep variation of the sample with the replacements. So in this case, bootstrapping sample one, there might be two blue, two orange, four, four brown, and four red. And then the second one is the three blue, three oranges, three brown, and three red. So in this, in like this way, we can keep trying to reproducing the a lot of variation of the sample size. That is the, what is called a bootstrapping. So bootstrapping actually allows with the uh, replacement. So that means there is a, also can be the overlap, overlaps in the picking, uh, selecting the selecting the part of the part of the sample uh, uh, original data. So that's the how how we can do the another way to to testing the samples, uh, uh, drawing the sample sampling method to testing the testing the performance of the model. So actually, there is also also talk about uh, there is also another alternative, uh, some of the alternatives, which means leave one out sample uh, the sampling technique. Actually, this is also the same name for the what is called the jackknife the sampling. This one is actually most extreme and computational burdensome sampling techniques. But the thing is that this one is actually very good for the small sample size and optimize the modeling process. What this one means is that as you can, this nickname indicates when you look at this bottom of the, this presentation slide, we try to keep removing the part of the part of the group from the from the our training data set. So in, instead of the instead of the uh, try to uh, try to adding or resampling sample size based on the equal sample size, in this case we're gonna try to remove remove the part of the training data set to to create the, our sample size. Okay, and then that remove one gonna be the our test data set. That's the how jackknife resampling is about. So that is also another link name for the jackknife resampling is a leave one out and then a leave on one out means just literally taken off the one of the one part of the samples from the training data set and then use this one to testing the performances. That's the how we can test about the another way. So in sum, when we try to resampling method to 
uh, testing the performances in here actually introduced the one is the k fold the other one is uh, the other is a bootstrapping and then the third one is actually in the book actually only leave one hour the sampling technique this one this term only introduced in the book and then did not explain too much about the, this, this sampling method but this one is actually what is called a jackknife uh, this sampling strategy so actually most of the this one is the kind of a this sampling strategy we use so usually actually bootstrapping is the one of the commonly used method I understand throughout the academic uh, literature so K fold is also sometimes used, but the thing is the K fold is the usually used when we have a quite large and then the efficiency sample size. But in case of the bootstrapping and then a jackknife, it might be the possible to to use the uh, you use this method when the sample size is uh, small, right? Because in the reason why we can use the these two options. When we when the sample size is small is because bootstrapping actually allows the replacement, and then a jackknife is just kind of a small part of the sample is out. It depends on the how what kind of it, depending on the your research question or not research question like a modeling or a sample size, you can use anything any option you want in here. But the thing, but the thing is, usually the bootstrapping or jackknife uh, resampling gonna be the good and extreme method to generalize performances result of the model. So, any questions? Anything? Uh, yeah, ju just a couple of comments on the on the resampling uh, techniques. Mm -hmm. If you can go up, mm -hmm. okay. In the K four uh, cross validation. Uh, one of the one of the aspects that you know the data science practitioner should be um, aware is that because you are going to divide in equal mm -hmm. sizes the training mm -hmm. data set, mm -hmm. you have to be aware also that you want to maintain mm -hmm. the distribution of your data mm -hmm. equal yeah. within each fold. Oh uh, yeah. So right. one way that you can do it, if it's mm -hmm. a supervised, for example, it's a supervised learning uh, uh, problem yeah. that you have a target, yeah, you can do what is called stratify. Okay, yeah. Yeah. stratify sampling. So you maintain, especially if the target, uh, the class is imbalanced, you maintain that imbalance throughout, you know, the different folds. So that's something mm -hmm. that you should be, you know, you should be aware because that's one of the you know, or the pitfalls of, you know, mm -hmm. when you start learning this, that you kind of uh, uh, forget sometimes mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you have to maintain that. Yeah. Okay. In the bootstrapping, uh, what I've seen in the practice, the bootstrapping is that for small uh, data sets, mm -hmm. it's a good, you know, it's a good technique, mm -hmm. but also even for large data sets, uh, you can do inference, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, inference uh, uh, st statistics, okay? Mm -hmm. And bootstrapping, what it does is that, you know, with the replacement, you can have as many samples as, as, you, as you want to mm -hmm. get a high confidence in your inference statistics, okay? Yeah. For example, you can have 5,000, yeah. uh, you know, samples because, you know, with replacement, you, know, you can go to infinite, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, th th there's no, you know, there, there, there won't be not enough data because the data is, go, is always going to be there. You know, the, the mm -hmm. pool of data is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, very good, uh, Kianto, very good uh, uh, bringing out the jackknife or the leave, out, leave one out uh, resampling technique. Mm -hmm. Because even though it's, it, you know, I agree that it's the, you know, the most computational, computational burdensome, the most extreme, and usually, you know, it's kind of bypass in that sense. Mm -hmm. When you go to time series, mm -hmm. this is one that is used, you know, traditionally used for algorithms that need sequential, you know, the sequential data 
uh, mm -hmm. intact, mm -hmm. okay? In other words, in the K-fold and the bootstrap, mm -hmm. you randomize, right? Your mm -hmm. selection, you know, to lower that selection bias. Mm -hmm. But in the time series, you are constrained with a sequence mm -hmm. of observations that you have to maintain. Mm -hmm. So there, the resampling that you can do sometimes is constrained by that sequence and then the leave one out is the one that really, you know, shines there. Mm. Okay. Mm. So you are going to use it more in this approach in time series for algorithms that need that sequential. Okay. For yeah. example, uh, exponential smoothing, uh, ARIMA yeah. models, they need that sequence. Yeah. Okay? Right. Yeah. Right. To, to, to then, you know, forecast the next, you know, the next uh, point or the next uh, observations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just wanted to add, you know, that comment. Yeah, okay. And actually, <clears throat> excuse me, actually also the other things about the, about the resampling strategy is maybe in here, actually bootstrapping and in the K-fold, it is actually assumed that uh, actually the total, total resampling size is equal, right? But sometimes in time in terms of the jackknife resampling, when we talk about the not the time series data set, just only normal data situations. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when we try to leave one out, we can actually make a variation mm -hmm. with the with a sample with a sample size to leave out. So that means, for example, our total sample size is 1000, for example. But the thing is when we try to do the leave one out kind of things, maybe first attempts, we can create the, create the one of the sample size with the maybe 980. Or second one is maybe, maybe leave one out is maybe eight, 850, something like that. Cause uh, it is not, <clears throat> what I want to try to say is when we try to say about the lead one out, that that lead out sample sizes can be buried across the sample for mm -hmm. sample attempts. That is also what is said about the most computer burdensome kind of thing. Because uh, not only for the how how not only for the sample sizes one out, the other thing is the each attempt, each resampling attempt can be can have a different sample size, mm -hmm. depending on the how many how many samples we can try to leave out. It is also can be randomized, but right. due to the those kind of variations, that actually allows us to get to the more generalizable uh, testing of the uh, modeling performances. So that's the kind of a jackknife resampling is uh, more like a I would say robust kind of method, I can say, to, to measuring the performances. Okay, so that's good. And then uh, when we move to the next one, so so variance and then uh, bias and variance are trade off. So that means we have to use the, we have to actually familiar with the bias and then variance. So bias means the kind of error due to the bias means the difference between the expected prediction uh, and and correct uh, correct observation value so which is the kind of like, uh, y hat by uh, minus actual observations right so that means it is uh, actually addressing the question about the how well a model can conform to the underlying structure of the data set so less bias error can be have uh, can deflect the overall structure uh, overall structure of the data set very well. The variance is the kind of, uh, as we know, variability of the model prediction with the given data points. So higher variance is gonna be using the resampling technique is to reduce the risk. So that means if we have a very a lot of uh, variation of the act actual observation data set, by using the resampling techniques, uh, over and over again to testing the that uh, to to testing the performances of model, we can actually try to uh, try to close reduce the risk of the of the our model, which means we gonna 
we're gonna try to try to reflect the depth variance and then uh, we our model is gonna be the more more strong predictive power. So that's the what this one is about. And then when the bias and then a uh, uh, bias and then the variance to trade off, that means that we can also thinking about the using the what is called the hyperparameter, which means the repeating the possible k values until the model gets the minimum error. And then that we can try to try to thinking about the how we can trade off the bias and then the variances. So in here, for example, when we try to do the k nearest the neighbor model with the different k value, maybe when we in case of the k is two, that means we only try to try to using the these kind of a very small bandwidth, like a like a uh uh fit the fit the model so that means this one can be actually uh how i can say it's a it's a reduced reduced reflects the variances i would say but there is a uh we, well, we can i what i can say is that we can at least get to the very 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 good Good fit of the model for the each kind of a grouping, kind of a sampling. Because when I say when I'm looking at the this plus, actually I'm gonna I'm gonna thought about the what is called the lowest kind of a curve. Because when we try to have a K two kind of a sampling, which is the bandwidth is a very very small, and then uh, each each bandwidth actually reflects reflects the curve, uh, curve or a linear line based on the this limited sample size. And then uh, this can be actually have a very overfitting kind of a kind of a model problem. But the thing is when we can have a very large, it is a very smooth out, what is called smooth out kind of a kind of a curve. That means we can, I personally think that we can reduce the reduce the biases, but the thing is our variation of the of the model can be very large, and then uh, it is not it is an actually what is called the underfeeding kind of a feel, uh, kind of a problem. So by keep repeating the different kind of uh, resampling folding sizes. We can try to try to debate, try to thinking about the what kind of what how many group resampling technologies can allow us to get to the minimum error of the model with a strong predictive power. So to testing those uh, to testing those kind of things, what we can do is we can actually uh, draw the some kind of a uh, this is a like an elbow, elbow kind of a kind of a curve, I guess. And then and the y-axis is a kind of like an error term, like a residual mean square error, I guess. Is that right? And then when we when what we can do That's is a a root, try, mean, uh, root mean root, 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 root mean square. Root, okay. Yeah. Root sorry. mean square. Yeah. Yeah. Root means uh, square error. And then we what we can do is a um, uh, try to try to identify the number of groups, which is the most minimum error uh, root mean square error uh, would be. So like an elbow curve. So I think that this one kind of actually used when we try to do the PCA analysis, there is actually, I can, I can back to in here and then uh, there is a number of, uh, number of effect, uh, number of uh, components and then a one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, when we try to develop the, these kind of things, and then uh, we can identify the bottom one. It is also the pretty the same one to testing, keep testing about the number of group, and then uh, we try to get to the identifying the number of group between the minimum uh, root mean square errors. So that's the that's the how. Uh, bias and variance trade-off. So 
Anything to add or any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So, yeah, just what we can do is uh, just kind of uh, identifying the identifying the number of groups in here to minimize the minimize the our root means uh, square error. So that's the thing. So, and then. The next one is the fine, uh, next one is the model value, uh, evaluation, which is the just kind of a testing of our value of the model. So it is called the loss functions. So that loss function actually defined about the metrics to compare the predict value and the actual values. And then by aggregating the error across the entire validation data set. So to estimate the, these kind of functions, there is actually many ways to calculate the, these things, you know. So when we can say here is mean square error is the most uh, most simple one, right? Okay. Bye. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. Most, also, you have mean absolute yeah. error too. Yeah, yeah. M -A 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 -E too. Mm -hmm. uh, but the most common for regression models, the most common that I have seen is the RMSE. Yeah, okay. RMSE, yeah. Co with, the, with, the, with the R square. Yeah, uh, yeah. But each metric has its advantages mm -hmm. and disadvantages, okay? Yeah, so, right, right. For example, talking about the RMSE, the RMSE, uh, it, it, uh, it gets impacted by outliers okay mm, mm -hmm. because it's a distance uh you know a metric so yeah. uh it's based on the you know on the observed value versus the average right you know yeah. that is the regression so uh our msc is going to be impacted by by outliers uh yeah. sometimes i don't see it there but sometimes you can use uh medium median yeah. average deviation mad for example when you have, you know, outliers that you cannot get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, to get a better, a, a better uh, idea of how your model is is uh, dealing with. Yeah, them. yeah, right. Because uh, in in this case, the reason why you say about the impact about the outlier is because of the, this part, right? Because it is Correct, actually yes. actually some of the square. So that means extreme outlier produces the very extreme positive value of the this mm -hmm. part that actually distorts the, some kind of error term results. So, so yes. to prevent those kind of things, actually, in my experience about the machine learning projects, I sometimes prefer to use the MAE because mm -hmm. the MAE is just kind of a absolute calculation is a absolute, abs, absolute value of this, right? Not the square roots, right? right. And then a sum of these. And then and then try to buy the mean. So this one actually is sometimes very useful when we have a when we even if we we have the root outlier and or maybe root mean square logarithmic error, which is the most complex one, can be also mm -hmm. possible to use because our log transformation can be allows us to the more normally distributed or more kind of like a uh, make a make a outlier is uh, outlier value is more standardized or normalized, mm -hmm. right? So exactly that, that yeah. that's what I mentioned the the medium yeah. because yeah, right. instead of using the mean, okay, which mm -hmm. also is affected by by the presence of outliers, mm -hmm. uh, usually the median it's uh, you know it's a good, good comparison. Mm -hmm. In terms of maybe some outliers are distorting your mm -hmm. metric, you know, your model is doing good, but then those outliers are throwing you off. So yeah, the, right. the mean absolute deviation also can mm -hmm. be used mm -hmm. to kind of compare, okay, mm -hmm. with yeah. these uh, mean based uh, metrics. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, but if we think we have a too many, too many outliers or maybe our distribution itself is a quite good kind of a distribution. In that case, we can sometimes uh, root mean square log, uh, log, uh, logarithmic 
uh, error error calculation gonna be the give us the more standardized error term for uh, to testing the validations. And then uh, to maximize part, all of the, these things is the our goal is to try to minimize the, these values, mm -hmm. all right? And then R square is uh, as we know is uh, just kind of a variation of the explain uh, y value uh, uh, by the x x variable, right? So that R square is the kind of like our goal is to try to maximize these values, because uh, better uh, more R values, better we can get for the more fit kind of a model. So actually R square, as we know, R square is actually ranges between the zero and one. So mm -hmm. that's the that's the what we know sure. about. For the R square, one of the you know weakness that you have to be aware of the R square mm -hmm. is that if you don't uh, use the adjusted R square, you know just the plain R square. Yeah. Uh, right. What happens is that when you add predictors to your model, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it tends to stay equal or go up. Oh right? yeah, right. Even right. even though that predictor uh, mm -hmm. is not really you know impacting your model mm -hmm. as uh, as expected. So one mm -hmm. of the things that you need to do is uh, just use the adjusted R mm -hmm. square because then it penalizes how many yeah. predictors you're adding yeah. to your to your model. Yeah, right, okay. right. And for yeah. example, if you look at the summary in mm -hmm. R of a linear regression, it gives you both. Mm -hmm. It gives you the planar square, you know, the yeah, yeah. adjust right. yeah. and the adjuster square. The yeah. adjuster square is the one that you should be, you know, paying attention to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that is actually adjusting based on the our 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 uh, structure of the predictors to predict the right. y variable. Yeah. So like uh, like adjusting by the number of parameters by the R square. Yeah. So that's right. the, so that's sometimes the one, yeah. you you add a predictor that is not really contributing, you know, anything yeah. to yeah, the model, right. but then the R square just stays the same or, or goes up. Okay. Yeah, just right, by right. adding that predictor. Yeah. Yeah, right. So that, that just yeah. R square is the one that you should be using. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. So that's great. Adjust it to R going to be also used. And then the other one is the what you call the classification problem because the up to the top, this one is actually what we can use uh, to testing the validation of model for the regression problem. When we turn, when it comes to the classification problem and then a classification model, there is also a, a different kind of a method to, uh, to testing the data set. Like uh, one is the misclassifications, like uh, like each class gonna be gonna be maybe uh, direct classes, and then uh, maybe we can try to try to variate the our uh, number of uh, number of observation for the each class differently. That's the kind of uh, intentionally misclassifying the our sample size for the each class to testing the how how successful our model can be classified to the each class. And then the mean per class error is the just kind of a testing the error term by the class group. And then also same thing for the mean square error. Mean square error is a just kind of a overall kind of a, uh, error term. And then uh, uh, cross entropy is the log loss and the deviance is more like a standard DB standardize the value of the error term. And then the Gini index is a kind of a testing about the inequality of the classification of the, uh, of the problem, like a false or true kind of a versus ratio by using the, by using the inequality kind of values. And then this one, all of the, these kind of error term is our goal is to minimize them to, so that means the less, Less error gonna be the better, better, valid, uh, more valid kind of a modeling. And then uh, the other thing is what is called the uh, confusion matrix. Actually, this one is uh, what I'm really familiar with to compare the actual categorical level to predict the categorical level. The objective is to maximize them. So in here, so when you're looking at the down to the here, this one is uh, what is called the uh, confusion matrix. So when we here is, this one is the predictive kind of things. 
So, so predictive event, and then this is actually actual kind of things. So up to the top in here is the true positive, and this is a, a true false. And then uh, this one, I think this one is the false negative. Oh yeah, it's a true negative, I mean say. And then uh, this one is a false positive. So when, when the event occurs, at the same time, actual data set also says about the event is occur. That is uh, actually successfully classifying indicator. So that means a true positive. This is uh, not happening in this case. And then uh, also actual data set is uh, not happening. This one is actually too negative. So that means all of the, these two di uh, diagnosis kind of things is the uh, model actually predicts the predicts the very well because it actually the result is actually same as the actual actual outcome. So so when we, when we calculate about the accuracy means we have to try to total total sample size, and then a total sample for the true positive and then a true negative. That's the, that's the give ups about the how accurate we can, we can classify the, our, our data set by the model. And then precision is the kind of like how, how accurately does the classifier predict the event. So that means this one actually says is a kind of test uh, T positive and T negative and then T positive. So that means how we can, can we successfully classify the true positive based on the, our accurate sample data set, right? Oh, uh, oh, no, 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 not, not this one, like a false positive, sorry about that. Oh, so false, yeah, false okay, positive, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, because this one is, uh, the, the, the predictive value to the uh, testing as the positive, how many true positive we can get by the Correct. model, yeah. And then uh, sensitivity is the kind of, like what is, this is also called the recall model, Mm -hmm. which means uh, as addressing the question, question of the how accurately does the classify, classifier classifying the actual actual events. So that means this one is a true positive and then false negative versus true positive. That's the kind of uh, what we can do. So that means um, to, in, 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 in here, like this low, and yep. then divided by the, this one, like uh, how we, how sensitivity, so how sensitive model can uh, judge to the true positive between the, between the uh, actual events. And then how, how sensitive model is out to pick, uh, pick up the positive. And then specificity, uh, uh, specific, so how I can pronounce this specific, specific, specificity. Yeah, specificity. Yeah, it's a hard to <laughs> yeah. pronounce. Yeah, yeah. don't yeah. take it slow. Yeah, specificity. Yeah, specific. Yeah. Speci it's like the of elasticity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one is actually a question about the how actually does the classify classifying the act actual uh, actual non events. So that means how how model can be can be pick out the non events between the between the true true samples. So that means this diagnosis and then picking up the this one, right? That is the what the specificity is about. So by using the, all of the, these four different kinds of measures, we can actually think about the, how valid and how strong predictive power our model has. So, mm -hmm. so any okay. questions? I'm going, to, yeah. I'm going to include in the chat. Uh -huh. it, it, it's, a, it, it's, it's a blog post, post, but it's a chart. It mm -hmm. includes a chart of what yeah. you explained here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know this if you can, yeah. if, if you can just, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, click it. 
Mm -hmm. so yeah, I clicked that. Yeah. The, sorry. Yeah. Because uh, cause in here, actually, what uh, what the, this one is about is, uh, as we can see, is uh, we just uh, by testing the predicts prediction and then the actual actual kind of uh, value like the compared to the these two and then try to figure out the try to calculate the ratio about the true positive gonna be gonna be the same for the actual result and then and then also how precision we can get to how accurately we can get to the our model can be predict the same result of the actual events actual observations and then how sensitive we can get for the for the true positive and then how we can get to the true negative one all of the these kind of a testing can be allowed us to the strong predictive power testing the predictive power of our model so that's the kind of thing and then uh, thank you for the link and then it's i just mm -hmm. i just uh, check out the link and then it is very useful yeah right yeah okay so mm -hmm. so it is uh, actually because of the design actually two by two binary kind of a classification problem mm -hmm. that is uh, because of the this uh class belongs to the this one or this one so that's the kind of uh, things so and then the and then the other part is the kind of a uh, to testing the validation is what is called the ROC curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is actually what we mostly uh, visualized our to to show the our predictive power or validity of our model, right? Mm -hmm. So ROC curve actually plus the false positive rates along the x axis, which is the, this one, and then true positive rate for the y axis. So depending on the force positive rates, what kind of a true positive rate is gonna be? So actually when the, this one, this force positive rate is uh, going up, that actually true positive rates gonna be the all actually close to be one. So, so that actually means the, the more force positive rate we can get actually, we can actually get our model gonna be predict the more true positive kind of a cases can be picked up. So actually what is the interesting about the, this one is the, the 45 degree diagnosis is a kind of a no better than guessing, which means Correct. close to the, this, our ROC curve is a close to the, this line like this. Mm -hmm. That means our predictive power is a very low and then the model is not that badly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that means we, we spoiled our model. So, so we have to think about the, how we can move this curve to the left, left, right, uh, left, top left, right? Right. Like this. Yeah, cl closer to that one. Yeah, cross that one. Exactly. That, that is the kind of a best optimized model that we can mm -hmm. get with a strong predictive power. And then uh, AUC actually computing the area on the uh, area on the curve. So that means we our uh our the the area at below the this curve this area actually allows us to calculate about the extent of the predictive power of the model which mm -hmm. means as a measure of the validity of the model right mm -hmm. so when we close to the this 45 diagnosis we our aoc model is a very AOC area is a very small, that means our predictive power is a very small compared to the best fit model. So that means the higher the line is upper left hand corner, the better okay. we can get with a stronger kind of a, a power with the model, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a quite simple and then uh, actually what I know is this one is the mostly we can present, especially for the academic literature when we try to use the machine learning kind of a techniques. We always try to visualize the, our AUC curve and then I try to 
try to present the, this kind of a curve result uh, into into the as a as a figure in within the within the academic research our paper. So that's actually oh. actually proved our validity of the model. So that's the kind of thing. And then anything, any questions or anything to add? Uh, ju just one thing. Uh, can, uh, can you go up? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, ju just go a little bit up. Yeah. Okay. I, no, no, ju just right there, just right there with the with the example. Okay, good, 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 good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, one of the things uh, I remember that there was a, a interesting webinar. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I'll, I'll I'll check the link, mm -hmm. but it was interesting in terms of uh, you know the business setting of mm -hmm. this of these models. For example, if you are going to uh, try to predict accurately the the fraud you know mm -hmm. a, a fraud a fraudulent transaction for example mm -hmm. uh you will see that basically the target is going to be very imbalanced okay because fraudulent mm -hmm. transactions mm -hmm. are very few compared to the whole right mm -hmm. and one of the things that we have to be aware is in the false positive right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the false negative uh, numbers mm -hmm. Yeah, those so. numbers, yeah, those yeah. numbers, they're going to have in the business setting, they're mm -hmm. going to have a cost associated with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, mm -hmm. for example, if we are in an environment of trying to detect fraud, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a model that mm -hmm. is a good model, mm -hmm. but it's not capturing, you know, mm -hmm. as, as, as we want, it's not capturing the mm -hmm. fraudulent transaction, in other words. Mm -hmm. the 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 false uh, negative is mm -hmm. kind of high okay mm -hmm. you know yeah. compared to the to, to the whole right the false negative yeah because yeah. you have the alpha level that is occurring but your model mm -hmm. is not catching it yeah so that's going to have a cost associated with that that is going mm -hmm. to be completely different mm -hmm. to the one which mm -hmm. the model is saying that this is a fraudulent transaction but it's not okay mm -hmm. which is the false uh, positive right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so in the business context you have to present mm -hmm. to management those disparities so yeah, they right. can grasp in their mind they, they can grasp that hey mm -hmm. we are losing okay mm -hmm. x amount of dollars because we're not catching those fraudulent transactions at least to a threshold that we feel that we can we can manage it or that mm -hmm. our insurance can cover it Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in that sense, you have to, you know, tweak your model with the thresholds, mm -hmm. right? With the thresholds, mm -hmm. you know, depending on where the probability goes, you know, to one side or to the other, to try mm -hmm. to minimize those false negatives. Okay, so sometimes mm -hmm. the ROC curve is just going to tell you, you know, when the model is uh, operating at a 0.5 threshold, in other words, it goes mm -hmm. one or, or, or the other, you know, depending mm -hmm. on the probability. Mm -hmm. But then it won't tell you exactly how much money you're losing. Okay. Mm -hmm. with the confusion matrix and with that tweaking, then you mm -hmm. can say, okay, we're going to minimize those false negatives in lieu to, you know, uh, having some false positives. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, we, we can maybe in the classification part, you know, we can do some, you know, so some examples of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's mathematics. Okay. It's, it's basically yeah. a mathematical equation, but yeah. you are not minimizing for, you are not maximizing the AUC curve. You are trying to minimize those false negatives because mm -hmm. the costs associated with them are higher than the false uh, positives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and that's so in the business setting. In the academia yeah. setting, the IUC curve works fine, right? Because you yeah. want your best model, yeah. right? You know, yeah. far from the, the random guessing. But in yeah. the business setting, the paradigms change, okay? Mm. Now you have a cost formula there that you have to juggle with. Yeah, right. Actually, this one is like in case of the first negative kind of things. Mm -hmm. Because uh, this one is actually when when we say about the, even if it's not only for the business settings, like uh, for example, like um, 
medical medical experiments like medical science right okay mm -hmm. like right. covid okay covid is yes. the direct example okay so when we testing we actually testing testing kit right of the covid 19 mm -hmm. right correct if we have a, a lot of a false negative this is mm -hmm. gonna be the very serious problem right oh yeah because yep. uh, actual patients have a COVID, right? But the yeah. thing is, our test kit says, no, that no, patient is not fine. the, yeah, yep. you are fine. In that case, that, that patient actually spread out the viruses, right? Exactly, exactly, so, yes. So yes. In, in, in the medical kind of medical science setting and then the medical kind of experiments, false negative is a kind of like a very serious problem. Mm -hmm. That means, yep. That means it is actually mis misclassifying the patients who Correct. who has the symptom, but mm -hmm. our model says no, it's not. You know, exactly. yeah, because uh, yeah, the, the consequence yeah. is far yeah. you know yeah. uh, graver in yeah. that false negative being high than the false yeah. positive. Okay, yeah. so you have to tweak your model so that yeah. it kind of try to minimize. It's yeah, going to right, maximize, right. you know, the false positive because it's just a fulcrum that you yeah. are, you know, dealing with. But at yeah. least, you know, you say, okay, at least I'm minimizing that yeah. occurrence. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> actually, compared to the this false negative and then the false positive, which one is more dangerous? Means the false <laughs> negative is a personally mostly commonly things regarded as a more dangerous compared to the false positive. Right. Like a mm -hmm. like a. When we talk about the test to test kit of the COVID-19, mm -hmm. maybe it might be okay, right? Because right. uh, even if a patient does not have a COVID-19 symptom, but mm -hmm. test to set is that you have one, in that right. case, at least the dead patients actually separate and then uh, try to right. try to prevent the uh, spread out of the mm -hmm. of the COVID-19 viruses. But in case of the false negative. That means patients said, okay, I'm okay with it. So I'm not yeah. COVID-19. I don't have any COVID-19 symptoms. So that means right. she- I can go he, out there and- Yeah, go party. out there and then just spread out the viruses. That's the dangerous kind of thing. Exactly. So yep. yeah, it is Very also good. the same thing, same thing for the, when we have a modeling kind of a situation like a power analysis. Mm -hmm. When yes. we try to do the power analysis, force negative, actually consider about the type uh, type two error. And mm -hmm. then this one is actually type one error. And then uh, mm -hmm. compared to the type one and type two, in the, in the power analysis situations, this one is a more dangerous and then a more critical compared to the type one. Right. Uh, yeah, that's a good discussion because uh, Mm -hmm. Actually, yep. they always have uh, differences between the business setting and an academic kind of uh, idea or experiment situation. It's uh, mm -hmm. always the differences. Right. So right. I also put uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, relevant figure I found because uh, when we have a uh, kind of uh, this higher uh, upper top uh, heads, that means we can get a smaller area of this. So keep separating it. So that means we can we can have a very close to the forty five diagnosis uh, uh, linear. That overall gonna be the growing up like this, right? Correct. But if we have a very upper top left ROC curve, mm -hmm. that overlapping area is a very small. This is what is actually called about the power analysis. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Testing the testing the these kind of a distribution overlap between the between the true negative and true positive, right? Right. This actually overlapping actually causes about the false negative and false positive. Like mm -hmm. when we try to get in, in the half, this yeah. one is the false negative, and then uh, the other half into the positive side is the mm -hmm. false positive. So that is actually power analysis is about actually in the Traditional regression or traditional regression or conventional uh, modeling approach is actually power analysis are not commonly used to testing the model. But in case of the machine learning uh, technique for the predictive purposes, power analysis 
is a very, very important to testing by testing the ROCNA UC corpus. So I think that this is the bit. And then uh, 2.7 is uh, just kind of putting all together that about the, what we discussed about the 2.1 and 2.6. And then these are the just kind of uh, showing the example about the, how we can make a progress of the or, or some examples. So mm -hmm. in here, actually, we can set up the we can set up the some of the resampling strategy, and then how we can specify the parameter to mm -hmm. optimize to get to the optimized mode, and then the training the validations, and then we can just run through the command like this, and then we can get to the final final kind of a grouping. And then after that, we can try to classify all of the our observation data and then uh, testing the validation and then uh, that validation, that testing the valid, that testing result of the model validation is the good, like uh, AOC curve is uh, more than 0.8. That means our model is gonna be predicted very successfully, even if we can have a test data set, right? So that's it. And then uh, that is the modeling process. And then uh, that is uh, everything we can get. So any Good. questions, anything? So chapter two is uh, quite long. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that long, actually, I would say, actually the, the amount of uh, pages we should read is pretty small, but the thing is that uh, this one actually covers the overall kind of a mechanism of the machine right. learning techniques. So from the chapter three through chapter 22 is uh, just kind of a variation of the techniques. So, mm -hmm. so process itself is the pretty the same across the all the machine techniques, uh, machine learning techniques. So chapter two is the very, very critical and important one. So we actually spent two weeks to mm -hmm. fully understanding about the, this kind of process, which is very useful. Uh -huh. For probably chapter three also, we're going to okay. spend, you know, more yeah. than one day, okay? Because there's a lot to cover there, okay? Yeah, yeah sure. So, so yeah. Uh, I'll see you then mm -hmm. next Sunday. Have a yep. great uh, rest of the weekend. Yeah. And, uh, we'll continue. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. And then I'll see you next Sunday. All right. Take okay. Care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah.